Welcome to Stardust Part 2, Matryoshka. It's interesting that you're using microwaves because for a number of years I've been giving the microwave oven as an example of how humans have engineered something that naturally occurs in nature. So when someone says, oh, you can't see low engineered reactions, they don't happen. Uh, I say, well, it doesn't happen in nature. Like, well, I say, well, microwaves happen in nature, but we're not all being cooked. It's just we've engineered a, a specific structure to use them. And essentially, in low engineered reactions, what people are doing is they are looking for structures that will enhance a natural effect, like a microwave oven. But the interesting thing is you're actually combining these two things together. Now, before we go on to more of the specifics and some questions that I have, you also men mentioned Max uh, formichev Zamilov, who's revisiting some historical experiments like the uh, exploding wires and, 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 and plasma discharges. So uh, uh, it's interesting that you've got that arc between Tesla and uh, sure. these revisiting of historical experiments. And I think uh, replication is the key and people need to stop fearing uh, that someone might criticize them that these things don't exist, therefore I'm not going to try. Um, what you've done is used modern technology uh, to revisit some previous claims and take it further. And that's effectively what uh, Max von Chevers Analog is doing as well. Uh, and a lot of these studies were before even, um, for instance, de uh, deuterons, deuterium was only discovered in 1932 and the exploding sure. wires was in 1922. And of course, 1880s when, when uh, 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 Tesla was doing his experiments, that was before many of these different things and the neutron wasn't discovered, the proton, sure. none of these things. So um, they were running a lot more blind. So by revisiting these old experiments using modern techniques, modern analysis, uh, we can learn so much, uh, uh, assuming it is doing what it's saying. Now, um, how you mentioned about the acceleration potential of uh, a dusty plasma and how that occurs, the intensification of uh, uh, electro fields, or electric fields on, on, on the, the particle surface and how that can accelerate positive ions. I notice in your, your paper that you uh, posit that the, the protons can be accelerated up to something like 0.7 mega electron volts, is that right? And or much more. Much more. Much, and, much more. And you're saying that then that can um, potentially cause uh, the production of neutrons. Sure. This is uh, one possible way. There are always several paths of reaction. One possibility is uh, this process is able to make uh, neutrons and uh, we are not the first uh, to realize that, of course, uh, but the, the other is the brute force of, of unifying, let's say, uh, carbon nuclei with, uh, with another carbon or oxygen or nitrogen, whatever. This is the Oshawa, uh, let's say, mesh or chain of possible reactions, which I, I think uh, are uh, Oshawa was able to do these fusion react, uh, reactions in two steps. Uh, our uh, device uh, is uh, far more sophisticated because uh, we, we really looked for uh, perfecting the, the engineering uh, side with building like Martyoshka uh, those uh, several resonances uh, into each other in order to to accelerate, accelerate, accelerate as much as possible. And in fact, we we built, uh, we calculated that five resonances are built upon each other. So what would you say those five resonances are? Of course, uh, magnetron is a resonant. Then, of course, uh, the electromagnetic cavity resonator is one resonant device. And then uh, we have there an acoustic uh, resonator and plasmon polariton uh, resonance is also there. So, and uh, this kind of, uh, of um, 
plasma wave field acceleration is also a kind of resonant process so we are on purpose uh, selecting these uh, phenomena and then squeezing into one box this is the reason that uh, this modest looking device is in fact the most powerful accelerator of mother nature um, let it be on the surface of, uh, of, of giant stars or <clears throat> the uh, Large Hadron Collider is just a small uh, school kid compared to our accelerator. Of course, our beam is not exclusively electrons or, or, or heavy ions. It, it does everything. And so your typical structure would be a power supply going to a, a transformer, going to a magnetron. There's a waveguide and that channels through to uh, a quartz, uh, um, blown quartz uh, resonation, uh, 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 acoustic resonator, acoustic resonator. Uh, cavity. Uh, and into that you're placing a, 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 an igniter, which you say that is what? It's, it's a, a very thin graphite rod. Uh, you can uh, use a more or less pure graphite rod uh, 2B or 3B, it's a pencil. Uh, it's like a, we call it in the uh, UK a popper point pencil. It's, it's yep. the re replaceable uh, lead. Sure. Now, there was some criticism that potentially this had some clay in there, and you said that you've done analysis on the lead sure, that you sure. used. And what Chemical analysis, silicium oxide. So silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide, but, but there were no titanium or calcium or whatever, yet we have found uh, for example, uh, and you can read in the paper, I don't have to detail, uh, uh, lots of other uh, materials like uh, zinc, uh, copper, uh, sulfur, which were not there. You're finding these in the ash. And yeah. you've used a range of techniques to analyze your ash samples from e EDX. EDX. So. Uh, I, fortunately, once in the lifetime, it was done for me free of charge because uh, our experiments were done really on a shoestring budget. And uh, it was done for us as a favor, but it, we couldn't get it uh, twice or or any or hundred times. So. Uh, you, you've also used some chemical analysis, that's right? Later, uh, we used, uh, when we used the charcoal experiment, uh, we used uh, to analyze uh, uh, chemically, which is rather cheap experiment. Uh, and uh, much later, when we had some very modest funding, we used the uh, mass uh, spectrometer, which has some advantage, but some disadvantage also. And uh, the source of carbon, other than the igniter rod, uh, the powder carbon that you put in there, where are your main sources for those? The main source uh, uh, is actually a nuclear reactor grade graphite moderator, which have been uh, actually cut and, and ground uh, uh, to, to pulp powder, dust. So actually. these are certified as being extremely high purity carbon? Uh, six, uh, uh, nine, 99.999. Okay, so we call it five nines, right? Five nine, five nine, six nine, something like this. Because it's very sensitive to impurities. This is the, the purest possible uh, graphite you can get. When you say it's sensitive to impurities, in what way is it sensitive? If there are some impurities, uh, it will uh, uh, grab uh, and uh, and uh, and grab neutrons, uh, thermal neutrons. This is the reason Germans were unable uh, to get a running nuclear reactor, and uh, Hungarian-born Leo Szilard was able to to produce. Uh, in Chicago, a uh, running nuclear reactor. The, yes. Right. That's very interesting. Um, so, why carbon? Is it because of its uh, boiling point? Carbon uh, is my favorite choice, but I got the idea from Tesla. Of course, uh, it has uh, 
several useful uh, properties. The first of all, it has a very high boiling uh, and evaporation point. So if you are not uh, firing it in, in oxygen and then it is still in, in the plasma, uh, it is perhaps the cheapest and the easiest uh, kind uh, of uh, material for a dust uh, particle. Uh, number two reason that it has two forms. Uh, it can be conductive, like graphite, or can be electrically insulating uh, in a, a fluffy uh, uh, form. Uh, for example, it is non-conductive. But uh, sometimes in arc discharge you are able to produce uh, um, uh, balls and uh, just uh, uh, let me think of uh, carbon tubes and nanotubes actually and uh, they are more conductive uh, than, than copper for example. So uh, carbon has a richness of, of forms and uh, for some of our experiment we used uh, these nanotubes but usually ordinary um, graphite dust uh, does the job. In the video you've just seen Dr. Eagley mentioned five resonances. The first was the magnetron. Now, magnetrons can deliver quite easily 700 watts in your home from maybe 1300 watts of power from your main supply. Well, you wouldn't really consider that a gain process, but it's much less lossy than, for instance, you would get from a resistive heating oven, like a convection oven, for instance. So it's quite efficient, although it's not a gain. You might easily find microwaves at your store that you can buy for maybe $120, $130 that are able to put 1,200 watts of microwaves into your cooking area. And the cooking area is the electromagnetic resonant cavity. And this is number two of these layered resonances. And whilst with nothing in there to heat, you can get very large levels of resonance accumulating energy. When the actual plasma is formed, Dr. Eagley says you only get a 10 times gain on a local basis. The third resonance is the acoustic resonator. Now this is the blown quartz silicon dioxide sound resonator. And Dr. Eagley is saying that this gives you up to a 20 times gain. The fourth resonance is plasmon polaritons. And this is one of the big ones. It can be very, very high from the literature, but he's giving it conservatively 10 to the power of 3. That's a thousand times gain. The last resonance, and the biggest, is the plasma wakefield acceleration. And Dr. Eagley is saying that he believes that this is able to give 10 to the power 6. That's a very large gain. Now, if you add all these together, you're getting potentially up to 2 times 10 to the 11 amplification of your incoming power. What does that really mean? That's 1200 watts times 200 billion. That's a very large number. You might be asking yourself why the whole system isn't just evaporating. Well, there are losses. For instance, there are losses upon startup when the dust at the bottom of the acoustic resonator is turned into a plasma. But also the plasma itself, where it is cooled with respect to the acoustic resonator body. However, the whole point of having resonance in the system is not to lose the energy put in. It is to accumulate it. This is how Tesla, for instance, was able to shake a high-rise building with a small mass in his apartment. You might also be asking, do all the various layers of resonances really compound? Well, probably not for the bulk of the system and certainly not for the bulk of the time. However, if you can imagine you've got these plasmons, these acoustic waves and these electromagnetic waves and they're all in different frequency domains interacting with each other, there will be times when you can imagine there is constructive interference and when they're all coinciding together, that is the point of maximum amplification of the input power. And whilst that might only be for a small fraction of time, if there are nuclear transmutation reactions going on, these reactions happen in incredibly small time frames. And so that's what makes this technology a possibility. Thank you for your attention.